Good morning, good day, good evening, and good night, YouTube, Rumble, fellow humans on Earth. Okay, so today's video, I'm going to be going over ATF-2021R-08F, the final rulemaking on firearms with attached stabilizing braces. This is just a joke, but you, it, it's important that we discuss this, make sure that everyone is aware of what is being proposed. So let's get into it. All right, so, oh man, I know this came out a couple weeks ago. Uh, pretty much everybody as far as the who's who's on YouTube has made a video covering this as far as gun rights goes. So this is it here. This is docket number 2021R08F. This is what the ATF submitted. Executive order 12866, regulatory planning and review directs agencies to assess the costs and benefits of available regulatory alternatives. This is how they start their entire argument is, let's talk about money. It's a joke. Um, in the second paragraph, the Office of Management and Budget has reviewed this final rule and determined that this rule is, is a significant regulatory action that is economically significant under section 3F1 of executive order 12866 because as discussed the final rule will have an annual effect on the economy of a hundred million dollars or more so yeah you know money 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 gotta get those money dollar bills because you know especially now that they're not backed by gold anymore or silver or anything of value and it's mostly just the good wood of our government that's what it's all about. Um, it just talks about, you know, what this proposal is about. They're trying to essentially change the rule that, not the rule, well, yes, changing the rules, but also the definitions of what is considered to be a rifle and by extension, short barreled rifle. Um, it talks about the, level of agencies that are affected as far as FFLs and private citizens and blah, 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 because, you know, um, you, you have to pay for those federal tax stamps at $200 each. Let's go it. Not only will this rule impact how new firearms with certain firearm attachments or accessories are to be evaluated, it will also affect existing firearms with attached stabilizing br uh, braces. So this isn't something that is, you know, firearms going forward. Uh, there's no grandfather clause as if you already have a firearm with a stabilizing brace or similar accessory. Um, just outright blanket coverage, anything that has attachments or accessories um, that can be considered a stabilizing brace fall underneath this. Nothing in this rule bans stabilizing braces or the use of stabilizing braces on pistols. However, firearms with an attached brace device may be subject to statutory and regulatory requirements depending on the firearm's objective, design features, and other factors as discussed in this rule. Essentially, they're saying that, you know, if you have an AR-15 pistol, um, that, you know, it's not banned you just have to give us $200, otherwise you're breaking the law. That's how they present this. Should individuals and federal firearm license, licensees be in possession of a firearm with an attached stabilizing, wow. So even if a store has possession of a firearm with, a, with an attached stabilizing brace, that constitutes a short barreled rifle under the FAA uh, and the GCA. 
the affected persons or FFLs will need to choose one of the following options. So again, this is not just your private owner or private citizen owning one of these. It's also if your uh, dealership, like Sportsman's Warehouse, Cabela's, Bass Pro Shops, your local small business uh, that carries firearms. This affects everybody across the board. Um, and they have to either turn in the entire firearm with the attached stabilizing brace to the ATF, destroy the whole firearm, convert the firearm into a long-barreled rifle, apply to register under the NFA, that's the tax stamp, uh, or permanently remove and dispose of or alter the stabilizing brace such that it cannot be reattached. All right, yeah, that's a bunch of yeah. It it's not a ban. You you just have to get rid of the firearm, destroy part of the firearm so that it can't be used in the way that it was manufactured. Give us two hundred dollars, or you're breaking the law. All right, so this uh, summarizes the effects that the final rule will have on the industry and public. All uh, right, affected population, five manufacturers of affected stabilizing braces, 3881 manufacturers of short bill barreled rifles that have stabilizing brace attachment, 13,210 dealers of short barreled rifles that have a stabilizing brace attachment. 1.4 million firearm, firearm owners who have pistols with stabilizing braces attached and those who intend to purchase them in the future. Now here's the thing that's really funny. Um, I can't remember. Uh, it was on the ATF's website, another post that they were talking about numbers and it didn't have the manufacturers of short barreled rifles that have stabilizing brace attachment. It was this number here, but it was seven. So what happened to the other two? Do they not count anymore? Or do they have ATF backing? Like what's going on? Why is there a discrepancy with these numbers? And then this number here in the proposal, it says 1.4 million owners, but the ATF, in their own numbers state that there's between three and five million private owners that have pistol braced firearms. So again, why is it a lower number? Is it, are they trying to spin it to where it's not going to affect as many Americans? Just doesn't make any, any sense at all. Um, Societal costs annualized. So this is annually 263.6 million at 7% or 242.4 million at 3%. Government costs annualized 7%, 3.3 million. Again, money, 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 money. That's all they care about these people. Unquantified benefits. To prevent manufacturers and individuals from circumventing the requirements of the NFA to enhance public safety by reducing the criminal use of NFA firearms, which are easily concealable from the public and first responders. This is a concept that they still do not understand. If a criminal wants to get a firearm, regardless of what style of firearm it is, if they want to get their hands on a firearm, this doesn't matter to them. They're already breaking the law. Do you think creating a new law is going to keep people who break laws within the law? It's a, it's a stupid concept. They have zero foresight. Uh, this is the accounting statement from the OMB. Uh, yeah, so they've updated some of the numbers. The previous one I saw had 2020 here. Now it says 2021. I don't know why it doesn't say 2023. It says 2023 right here at the beginning of it, and yet they're still using an old table for no reason. 
besides laziness. So this just kind of goes over all that previous information on the last table, just in a more organized fashion. This analysis provides an assessment of the impacts to society and government from final changes detailed in the rule on factoring criteria for firearms with stabilizing braces, blah, 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 blah. In 2012, a company developed a stabilizing brace asserting that their device would help persons with disabilities and limited arm strength or mobility to fire heavy fire, fire heavy pistols with a single hand. In the recent years, though, there has been an increase in the production of firearms with attached stabilizing braces that possess uh, objective design characteristics that are indicative of firearms designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder. Many of these firearms attached with stabilizing braces fall under the purview of the NFA because the firearm has a barrel or barrels of a length of 16 inches of of less than 16 inches in length. Essentially, they're saying they're they're making the argument that these AR pistols are not pistols, but instead short barreled rifles. And because you can shoulder fire them, therefore they are rifles. Uh, da, da, da. This rule sets forth standards for evaluating stabilizing braces in conjunction with how they modify a firearm. This rule will impact both how ATF evaluates new firearms with certain attached firearm accessories and how the ATF evaluates existing firearms with attached stabilizing braces. Nothing in this rule bans stabilizing braces or the use of stabilizing braces on pistols. However, it, see there's the but. Oh, nothing in this rule bans, but firearms with an attached brace device may be subject to statutory and regulatory requirements depending on the firearms objective design features and other factors as discussed in this rule. No definition there very subjective, vague wording, but they, I know that later on they do go into more detail on some of this stuff. If a firearm is attached with a stabilizing brace contains the objective design features that indicate that it is intended to be fired from the shoulder and the firearm has a barrel length of 16 inches or less, then it is now a short barreled rifle under the NFA, and therefore you have to give us the $200, otherwise you're a felon. And again, they repeat the turn in to the ATF, destroy the firearm, convert the firearm into a long barreled rifle, apply to register under the NFA, permanently remove and dispose of or alter the stabilizing brace from the firearm such that it cannot be reattached. Uh, population. This rule does not regulate stabilizing brace devices themselves and individuals may retain possession of them. The rule also does not ban the use of stabilizing brace devices on firearms. However, again with the but, this rule doesn't ban the use of it, but the final rule amends the definition of rifle under 27 CFR. They're just trying to change the definition of rifle to include that weapon that is equipped with an accessory component or other rearward, rearward attachment, for an example, stabilizing brace that provides surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder, provided other factors as described in the amended regulations indicate that the weapon is designed, made, and intended to be fired from the shoulder. Rearward attachment that provides surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder. How much surface area? Is it a one inch by one inch surface area? Is it a one inch by three inch surface area? How much of an area are we talking about? There's no definition given. There's no specificity in the words that they use. This rule would affect both future and past retail purchases of stabilizing braces and firearms 
with attached stabilizing braces. Based on anecdotal evidence from the manufacturers of stabilizing braces, the manufacturers have sold between seven between three million and seven million stabilizing brace devices between the years of 2013 and 2020. So again, right here they have the three to seven million, but if you go up back up to this table, they're saying that it's only going to affect 1.4 million. So you're telling me that these one all 1.4 million firearm owners are purchasing two to three stabilizing braces that makes zero sense at all and of course it's anecdotal they don't actually give you a source subject matter experts estimate that the manufacturers likely inflated their number their sales estimates in recent years and therefore the ATF estimates the number of stabilizing braces sold to be 3 million rather than the midpoint of 5 million or the high end of 3 million. Here, let's, let's take the lower number to get this passed because, you know, 7 million. We wouldn't want 7 million people to be affected by this. 3 million is already twice as much as what they said previously. So it, it just doesn't, it's frustrating the way that they word things. This estimate is based on the number of firearms with stabilizing brace in circulation as described below. Nonetheless, ATF has also calculated the anticipated costs of this rule using an estimated 7 million stabilizing braces to account for uncertainty regarding the full cost of rule. So when it comes to the implementation of this, they are going to do the 3 million. But when it comes to the cost uh, accounting of it, they're going to use the 7 million. Uh, commenters stated that recently published Congressional Research Service report an estimate suggesting that there may be between 10 and 40 million braces with some arguing that the number of braces and pistol brace combinations would be upwards of 40 million one commenter implied if the atf were to use the 3 to 7 million range then the midpoint 5 million should be the number the atf uses Furthermore, public comments have pointed out that ATF assumed that the entire estimated number of stabilizing braces were assumed to have been deemed a stock and that the ATF did not take into account any firearms with attached stabilizing braces that when attached to a weapon did not create a weapon designed to be fired from the shoulder. This is a good argument because, yeah, the ATF is just, when they're, you know, taking into account everything they're just saying that all stabilizing braces therefore can be sh shouldered and that that's not the case and i mean maybe that's why they're saying that it only affects 1.4 million people even though you're saying there's they're saying three to seven million even though the congressional research services says 10 to 40 million braces um I don't know if you know, but uh, none of those numbers equal 1.4. So the ATF is also choosing not to use the 5 million estimate suggested by Sig Sauer based on the historic number of pistols produced. An estimate of 5 million would suggest that there was just one firearm with a stabilizing brace produced for every six pistols or approximately 16% of all pistols. What? Are you stupid? Essentially, Sig Sauer told the government, like, oh yeah, we produced 5 million. And then the ATF was like, nah, that couldn't be, because that would make 16% of pistols have braces. 
Additionally, based on information gleaned from field offices throughout ATF, ATF estimates that only a subset of FFLs sold firearms with stabilizing brace. And of those that sold them, FFLs may carry in their inventory on, on average only seven firearms with attached stabilizing braces. This ha carries no weight at all. Because guess what? Those firearms, even if they are in the dealer, still exist. Oh, here's another anecdotal. The ATF estimates that there estimates there may be stabilizing braces, including some that may have been purchased by persons with disabilities that will not be affected by this rule. Therefore, based on anecdotal estimates of the Fire and Ammunition Technology Division, that there may be approximately 1% of stabilizing braces that when attached to the firearm would not result in a firearm that is designed or intended to be fired from the shoulder. 1%. ATF modified their estimated number of firearms with the stabilizing brace from a total of 3 million to 2,970,000, aka 3 million. Because it's like they your estimated number of firearms is exactly 3 million. Why not 3,127,843? At least that's an actual like solid number because they have no idea twenty twelve ATF received its first submission of a stabilizing brace to determine if it changed the classification of a pistol. Since then stabilizing braces have been modified and sold in such a way that when they are fixed to to certain weapons, these firearms constitute NFA firearm. Dividing the estimated number of firearms with stabilizing braces, uh, two, the, the last number, 2.9 million, to 6.9 million uh, by eight years, ATF estimates that the future number of firearms with stabilizing braces would range from 371,250 to 866,250 per year because ATF is here considering the estimate population of firearms with stabilizing braces to be 2.9 million. The annual number relevant here is 371,250. However, ATF will also undertake future enforcement actions regardless of the publication of the rule. I can't believe they actually wrote this in. The ATF will also undertake future enforcement actions regardless whether this rule passes or not. ATF estimates that these enforcement actions will reduce the future number of firearms with stabilizing braces by an equal by an amount equal to the number of firearms with stabilizing braces sold through FFLs. Wow. That I still can't believe that they just outright said regardless of this rule being passed or not, we are still going to undertake future enforcement actions. That blows me away. And then it talks into type one and type seven FFLs. Okay, individuals. This is where we need to go, because this is about us. The individual, the citizen, the people who vote for our politicians, the people who pay the ATF salaries. This is where we need to focus in. 
This rule would affect all individuals who currently own a firearm with an attached stabilizing brace that is subject to regulation under NFA, as well as individuals who intend to purchase a firearm. So it's just saying that this is a affecting future and past firearm owners who have a firearm with a stabilizing brace. Based on information gleaned from the disposal of bump stock type devices, which was an option under final rule 2018R22F, ATF estimates that individual owners may own between 1 and 63 firearms. However, this the mean ownership is approximately two, which ATF uses for purposes of this analysis because there may, okay, so this is how they got the 1.4 million is because they're saying, you know, they're taking mean ownership of approximately two. So yeah, this is how they got to the 1.4 million individuals, even though likely it's higher than that. Okay, ATF receives estimates from commenters that the number of individuals is equal to the number of firearms with stabilizing braces in circulation. ATF disagrees with this assessment. Again, they're just saying like, we hear you say large numbers. We don't want large numbers. We want small numbers. That way it doesn't appear to affect as many people. So this is a less common type of weapon. So therefore it can get pushed through. The Pew Research Center states that of people who own firearms, two thirds own mo multiple firearms. And as evidenced by the number of bump stock type devices turned in as a result of the bump stock rule, individuals can and are likely to purchase more than one firearm, or in this case, more than one stabilizing brace. You can't make that assumption. You can't make that assumption at all. That's like saying people who buy uh, let's you know let's change out firearm for a different uh piece of merchandise individuals can and likely to purchase more than one car or in this case more than one sports car or car with large engine After publication of the bump stock type device final rule in 2018, individual owners turned in between one and 63 bump stock type devices. And here's the thing, that right there, that is probably an FFL. That is probably a business that sold them. Overall, ATF found that people turn in an average of two bump stock type devices. Individuals in possession of a firearm with an attached stabilizing brace may have acquired a firearm configured with a brace device or may have attached a brace device to a pistol. Therefore, ATF estimates that the number of individuals in possession with the firearm, blah, 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 blah. This is just so irritating to read. So that was the that was their attempt at the the legal side and legal argument using very sporadic number ranges like ATF's 3 to 7 million the congressional research of 10 to 40 million uh, cost to firearms with attached stabilizing braces as stated before there are five means of complying uh, there's that there's that good government word, complying. You must comply. Uh, it, I, you could substitute comply with compel. You could swap complying out with uh, mandate. A mandatory. Forced. You know, whatever you want to put in there. Uh, you probably get away with swapping that word out. Uh, one way of complying is to allow individuals and FFLs to turn in firearms with 
such devices that are subject to NFA and ATF, or to ATF. Turning in the firearm to ATF will mean that the individual or FFL will need to turn in the whole firearm. Not, not just the brace. They gotta turn in the whole thing. The whole firearm. Public comments suggest that the loss of the firearm should be included in the analysis. ATF concurs that there may be a small number of individuals or FFLs that choose to turn in their whole firearm to the ATF. These may include individuals who imported pistols or who may end up losing the value of their firearm if the firearm is a semi-automatic rifle. This is due to the restriction which makes it unlawful for any person to assemble from import which makes it unlawful for any person to assemble from imported parts any semi-automatic rifle which is identical to any rifle that is prohibited from importation because it is not sporting. Who cares if it's not sporting? It's like they don't under- well, they don't understand the Second Amendment and that's why this is such a problem. So for this part, they're just talking about numbers of individual owners and FFLs who may or may not turn in their uh, stabilizing braced firearms. In order to estimate the leisure wage of an individual traveling to a local ATF office and turning in the whole... F okay, so that's what they're talking about. They're talking, so this is, what they're trying to do here is make an estimate on if they did do a, essentially a gun buyback, a man mandatory turn in of guns. Um, they're trying to say that the only people who would do it are people who make $16 an hour or more. Again, you... <laughs> You can't assume any of this. This is all theoretical. I mean, you guys might as well be trying to do phys uh, theoretical physics at this point. Because none of this is grounded in reality. This is all theoretical. Like, 90% of this bill, or proposal, whatever they want to call it, uh, is all theoretical. Because they're using numbers from a different scenario that happened years ago now they're trying to calculate the number that would be completely destroyed the number that would be uh, converted into long barreled rifle they're essentially going through and trying to figure out how many people are going to be breaking the law that that's what it that's that's what this appears to be like is they're trying to calculate how how many people are willing to break the law so we can implement this how many people are willing to say no to tyranny so that way we can make sure that those people are taken care of so we can have them on a watch list and if they try to do anything we can get them before they do anything And then uh, apply under the NFA. This is the one that, you know, how much money can we get? Okay. Da, da, da. Cost to permanently remove and dispose of or alter stabilizing. Okay, so this is their last option. Which, yeah, th this whole proposal is just aggravating summary of the overall cost of the rule as stated in chapter 2 population there may be a range between oh now they changed it now there may be a range between 3 and million instead of a strictly 3 million already purchased by the public this chapter reviews the overall potential costs Depending on the estimated number of firearms with attached stabilizing braces with ATF's primary low estimate of 3 million and a high estimate of 7 million. Again, why don't you... St <laughs> I was going to say, why don't they just go with the 10 to 40 million? But at this point, it doesn't matter. They're losing their own argument. This section summarizes the total private societal costs for individuals and industry. This 
for individuals and industry. So this is summarizing the total private societal costs for individuals and uh, industry of the final rule as described through this RIA. In order to simplify the expected costs of this rule, ATF summarizes each of these scenarios and frequency of these scenarios. <sighs> wow. Turn into the ATF a grand total of more than $400 million. Destroy the whole firearm is going to be more than $400 million. Convert into a rifle is going to cost $100 million. Apply for the NFA is going to be another $100 million. Loss in existing firearms with stabilizing brace and brace devices, $65 million. Foregone revenue, $100 million annually. The, now, keep in mind, this is... For this is the total amount of lost money for individuals and FFLs. This is not how much it's going to cost the government. This is not how much the government's going to make. This is how much it's going to cost us as the firearm owners. At least that is how it reads for me. I'm not a lawyer. Legal jargon gets very complicated, which is why you typically want to consult a lawyer when dealing with contracts and laws. Wow. Based on the above information, ATF shows a total private societal 10-year cost of the rule using a primary estimate of 3 to 5 million firearms with attached stabilizing braces. Wow. Using a primary low estimate of 3 million firearms equipped with stabilizing braces, the annualized private societal cost. How is it a. Again, the, the words that they use. Private societal cost of this final rule would be 242 million at 3% and 263 million at 7% respectively. Why are you guys calculating for interest? That doesn't make sense. It should be just a flat number if you're talking about costs. Uh, based on public comments, the department has decided to forbear all NFA taxes for all firearms encompassed by this rule for making and transfers that occupy prior to the date. As a result, there will be no transfers from the industry to government as a result of this rule. Government costs. In addition to private societal costs in this rule, there would be government costs associated with this rule and handling, uh, sorry, associated with this rule to handle the processing of NFA applications received. Ah. Half a million dollars for the first two years, that's nothing. That's chump change. Okay, so analysis of alternatives considered. So preferred alternative is uh, the what they proposed, essentially, with all of their BS. 7% um, annualized discounted costs, 266.9 million benefits to prevent manufacturers and individuals from circumventing the requirements of the NFA to enhance public safety by reducing the criminal use of such firearms, firearms which are easily concealable from the public and first responders. Uh, they also don't put in here, um, you know, SBRs and pistols tend to be a lot less accurate than long barreled rifles as well. They, they forget to mention that one. Um, if they don't make any change at all or and just leave it how it currently is, um, there's no change. There's no loss of money, no income of money, nothing. Uh, specific quantifiable standards with set metrics. Less than preferred alternative less than preferred alternative since it does not account for the non-quantifiable features. 
what does that mean? Like that whole entire line, zero sense. Um, alternate three grandfather all existing firearms with stabilizing arm brace uh, would cost a hundred million dollars but similar but not identical to preferred alternative due to these firearms not being registered as per the NFA. So they don't like this option as much because then they don't get their money out of us. Guidance documents, um, this would be actually like publishing into public guidance documents, um, $1.64 million in cost. Less than the preferred alternative because not as clear as amended regulations and non-FFLs may be less aware of guidance and hence continuing selling firearms outside the purview of the NFA. That's a decent argument, um, but I would say that American-based companies would understand what the the guidances are um imported parts not so much so this is uh, as far as like the manufacturing of uh stabilizing braces giving guidance to manufacturers um and what they're afraid of is you know like joe schmo down at the corner he goes and buys uh an ar pistol and then buys a stabilizing brace off of Wish or Amazon or whatever, um, which would not be compliant. Whereas if you went directly through a manufacturer, it would. So I, I can kind of understand their argument with this one. NPRM weighted criteria. I hate their weighted. They love points. Uh, the weighted criteria is essentially like well, based on this design, you get one point. Based on this design, you get two points. Based on this design, you get three points. And then for like five different categories, and then in total, if your weapon has four points or more, it's an illegal weapon. It, it's, I hate it so much. Um, and then alternate six, no tax amnesty. I don't know what that one means, but... No, here it clarifies. So let's go to six. No tax forbearance. This alternative would be would require individuals and entities that currently have firearms with attached stabilizing braces to apply and register their affected firearms. Isn't that what the primary alternate is? This alternative allows individuals and entities that currently have firearms and with it to oh okay I, I see i see i see so that's what okay so their primary alternate is the five choices where you turn it into the nfa you destroy it you pay them you make it to where it doesn't have a stabilizing brace whatever that's their their uh their alternative Alternative six is saying that you just have to pay the tax. Gotcha. Yeah, none of this is good. Just uh, so you are aware, ATF um, and Congress, none of this is good. All right. So uh, hopefully, as you guys saw with your own eyeballs, or ear holes if you're not watching and just listening. Um, yeah, this proposal that the ATF submitted is a hot steaming pile of poop. Actually, I shouldn't even call it a pile, really. It's just like diarrhea, and it smells awful. That's what this is. Um... It's not, as far as I'm aware, it's not completely set in concrete. So if you guys contact your local representative, both at a state level and a federal level, uh, contact your local sheriff's office, just push back at this as much as possible because 
number one, it's just nonsensical. All of their arguments are all theoretical. They didn't present anything of substantial evidence. There was no concrete numbers. And, you know, it. they make it sound like this isn't going to affect a lot of people. The problem is it's going to affect all of us. It affects every single American citizen, whether you own a gun or not. If we let them push this through, what's next? If we let them have stabilizing braces, what's the next thing going to be? Is it Are they just going to make all semi-automatic firearms illegal? Are they going to make pistols illegal? Like, what is next after this? And so if we push back now, if we prevent this from going forward, it protects every American citizen. And that's what is important. Whether you like guns or not, approve of guns, buy guns, don't like them, whatever, wherever you are on the spectrum, it doesn't matter because this bill here or proposal, whatever you want to call it, term sheet, um, this affects every single one of us in the long haul. So I, I want to thank everybody who's made it this far, watched along with me as I attempted to understand this proposed bill. Uh, I don't like it. I don't think anybody should like it. I don't think this should pass. Um, again, reach out to your local representatives, your local sheriff's departments. Um, push back on this as hard as you can legally, patriotically, peacefully, no violence, no no summer of love round two, none of that. Um, we just got to, you know, keep calm, cool, collected, push back legally, fight this in the courts, fight this in Congress, fight this at every level that we can, have a civil discourse about alternatives to this. I don't see a problem with stabilizing braces, in my opinion. I think the whole regulation of short barreled rifles and stabilizing braces is a moot point. Like I said earlier, your short barreled rifle and pistol by extension is less accurate than a long barreled rifle. So yeah, it's concealable, but guess what? A pistol, a full size, like a 1911 or a Glock 17 or 19 or 22 or 43, whatever, it doesn't matter. A pistol is concealable. A pistol is going to be more concealable than a stabilizing braced pistol. So their whole argument about for safety and concealment and whatever other arguments they have, it's all for moot point. None of it actually is real. Um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, if you haven't already, follow me over on Rumble. Click the like and comment here on YouTube. Um, and I hope to see you guys soon. Uh, just so you guys are also aware, I will be having a guest on the show here shortly, and we will be discussing um, contracts and things adjacent to contracts. We will be discussing the Louder with Crowder and Daily Wire debacle, as well as the Dungeons and Dragons OGL revisions uh, and what that means as well. Um, so again, click that like button, follow me here on YouTube, Rumble, wherever you might be watching this, follow me. Uh, all of my socials are linked down below. Thank you for watching again. Thank you for all your support and peace.